Hello, Nick here from 4PlayerNetwork.com. Thank you for watching. These are my top 5 game franchises that I would like to see take a stab at going open world. Alright, let's start with Persona, a game with a mysterious new sequel that is quickly approaching. And it's a series that I've tried many times to see through to completion, but never really succeeded. And part of that is because I've always loved the social aspect of the game, in fact that's what's kept me coming back to it, but it's this day-to-day -day progression that has never really felt great to me. The fact that you are always limited to how much you can accomplish by the simple set of rules that exist for seemingly no other reason than to make decisions that much harder to make. For example, I can only accomplish one thing in the evening after school before going to bed. What are you going to do? Ugh, I hate that. On top of that, cycling through a menu to travel between interest points in town gets old very quickly. I want to see a fully realized Persona game, where the hometown that the characters occupy is built to scale, and how much you can accomplish in a day is determined by, you know, time. Maybe even add some weight to your decision by decreasing your ability to do well in school the later you stay up the night before. It's a series that seems to already have simplified versions of open world features that already exist in other games. It'd be great to see those features fully realized and tied directly into the social aspects of the game, such as managing friendships, romances, extracurricular activities, entertainment, etc. When you think about it, it really has a ton of potential to be a really unique open world experience. What if your ability to maintain friendships actually required you to be punctual? To know the layout of a town and how long it takes to get somewhere? It would make the game a little bit harder for sure, but it's practically begging to be done. All they have to do is be willing to break free of the mold they've already established many times over. Here's a name you probably haven't heard in a while. Prince of Persia, one of the few remaining Ubisoft brands that has yet to venture into open world territory. They have dabbled in a few new ideas to varying degrees of success. Prince of Persia 2008, I'm looking at you. Um, but it's never been the most polished franchise, and for a long while, despite that, it was my favorite puzzle platformer out there. And I think they have an opportunity to elevate that to AAA status, along with all of their other major brands. With the success of Far Cry, Assassin's Creed, Watch Dogs, etc., it seems like Prince of Persia has kind of fallen to the wayside. It's like they've almost forgotten about it. But, I mean, the truth is, Persia has long since been a location or a setting that I've wanted to freely explore in a game. And with Assassin's Creed seeming to want to steer clear of that, Prince of Persia is the obvious frontrunner to do it. Um, the only problem with the, the, the series is that in the past, we've been confined to the interiors of these giant elaborate palaces. And it's been going on for too long. It's, it's, it's really frustrating because the, the games were literally just room after room of these vertical playgrounds for the player to navigate using all kinds of crazy flippies and other cool circus maneuvers. And while that's great, I love it, the, the gameplay was awesome, it just didn't make a whole lot of sense in the context of the world. But as an alternative, I'm kind of envisioning an entire game modeled after the platforming challenges that you would stumble across that were introduced in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. Imagine being able to travel across Persian cities and markets openly, finding these hidden tombs or areas or puzzles or whatever you want to call them where you could execute these elaborate platforming challenges um, hidden outside of the palace walls i mean the benefits to the storytelling alone would be tremendous because let, let's be honest no single palace in the world would ever feature that many security protocols that allow for as many wonderfully complex puzzles it just wouldn't happen so I'm saying let's spread that out, let's distribute it out across a giant Persian landscape. Let's Zeldify that bitch. The franchise is literally made for Ubisoftification, and despite the negative connotation that word seems to have, I feel like this is a franchise that would absolutely benefit from it. It's just kind of strange that it hasn't happened yet. Okay, this choice is a little weird, I know. Honestly, this isn't so much about amnesia as it is directed at frictional games. I love their work, as they are really, really good at what they do. Whether it's Penumbra, Soma, Amnesia, they do some of the best atmospheric horror on the market. However, we've also seen the rise of open-world, story-based exploration games, for lack of a better term. Uh, these aren't necessarily the traditional definition of open-world games, but they do allow a certain level of freedom to explore a large open environment and kind of piece together a story kind of like a puzzle. 
Examples I can think of would be The Vanishing of Ethan Carter, or more recently, Everybody's Gone to the Rapture. In 2016, we have a whole slew of these games coming to us as well. Now, whether Frictional does another amnesia or something entirely new, I would just love to see their style of storytelling and world building applied to much larger environments. My favorite thing about The Vanishing of Ethan Carter was how you were free to explore and bring the puzzle together in pretty much any order you choose. It was great how the game provided really subtle hints as to where you may want to look next, but pretty much relied on the player to be observant and figure it out on their own. I think it would be an awesome format for a frictional horror game, and quite honestly, I suspect that Frictional would be able to do it much better than most other developers who have attempted it. Now, linear horror is fine, and god knows we have a ton of it. In fact, I really liked Soma, but if anyone can make an open-ended, moody, and smart horror game, I think it would be Frictional Games. Luckily, Soma seems to have ensured the continuation of the studio for the foreseeable future, so the possibility of a open-world horror game is not off the table. Okay, full disclosure, I have very recently discovered a love for Disney. And I know what you're thinking, how would a Kingdom Hearts open world game even work? Well, Kingdom Hearts managed to do the impossible already. It beautifully merged the best of Final Fantasy and the deep Disney catalog into one game. It made no sense, but you know what? It worked. Now, what it didn't do was connect those worlds in a visible, meaningful way. In fact, the worst part about that game was the awful, awful, awful gummy ship the one completely original concept in that game. I hated it. Now, with Kingdom Hearts 3 looming on the horizon, it's clear to me that a current-gen Kingdom Hearts game needs to reevaluate its world structure. Luckily, Disney already has a built-in, real-world model for how an open-world Kingdom Hearts game could be structured, and it's called Disney World. It's a central hub area that branches off into various themed areas that you can explore at your leisure. Now, Imagine if the many different worlds of Kingdom Hearts were actually areas that occupied different parts of the same giant hub world. It'd be amazing. Very much like a good 3D Zelda game, you'd be able to look off in the distance and visibly see landmarks that correspond to some of your favorite Disney movies. Instead of Death Mountain, I could faintly make out the iconic hilltop from Nightmare Before Christmas. Or off to the east, you could see a shoreside town with a giant clock tower Peter Pan calls home. All you would need is some kind of central hub area, kind of like Hyrule Field, that makes sense in the context of the universe, and bridges the worlds together seamlessly. Luckily, Zelda has already done this beautifully and could serve as inspiration. And I love this franchise, but I feel like at the start there were a lot of questions internally about how, bizar how this bizarre-ass concept would ever work. Limits of the technology had to be taken into consideration. The target audience had to be considered. The game ended up having a much wider appeal than they originally thought, so it would be kind of a shame to stick to those same lame ideas. Now, unfortunately, with the world structure already as it is, it was established in Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2, it wouldn't make a whole lot of sense for them to just scrap it and redefine it. But stranger things have happened, so my hopes are high, Kingdom Hearts 3 looks amazing, I'm just really, really, really hoping for no more of this gummy ship bullshit. Give me an open world. Just, I don't care if you clone Zelda. Like, look, Zelda clones can be amazing. Darksiders was an awesome, blatant Zelda clone. And I loved it. Kingdom Hearts could do the exact same thing. And Kingdom Hearts 3 might actually end up being incredible if it does so. My fingers are crossed, Square Enix. My fingers are fucking crossed. If the gaming industry was a giant proverbial room, Resident Evil would be what I consider to be the elephant. For a series that has experimented as much as it has, it's kind of amazing how many failures it's racked up in the process. Now, before everybody freaks out, let me just say that I love Resident Evil 4. It's an amazing game, it's easily one of the best in the franchise. But, I also happen to think it's the worst thing to ever happen to the franchise. The Resident Evil remake came out in, I think, 2002, and it felt like an experiment. A potential new direction for the franchise. It raised the bar for every aspect of that franchise, whether it be atmosphere or storytelling, acting, visuals, whatever. It raised the bar across the board. A couple years later, Resident Evil 4 came out, and it also felt like an experiment. Like They were trying to find their footing, see where they wanted to take the franchise. Now, while they were both great games, Resident Evil 4 was a tremendous mainstream success. And obviously, ever since that moment, Capcom has taken Resident Evil down the path set forth by Resident Evil 4. And it's been to its detriment, because I think it's been driven straight into the ground. 
And what Resident Evil needs more than anything right now, to me, is a complete reboot from the ground up. And what better way to do that than introduce a completely new world structure, built with classic Resident Evil design sensibilities. Require the player to remember the placement of key locations and items for the sake of puzzle solving, progressing the story, deepening the lore, whatever. Imagine if Raccoon City Police Department, as an example, was just a location in a bigger, more intricate open world setting that you could visit and leave at any time. Give the opportunity to the players to build lore and fuel fan speculation and all that good stuff via open world exploration. Give us secrets, things to stumble across that are outside the confines of these very isolated locations. And give us the ability to explore them at our leisure. And at the same time, let's infuse the world with the same atmosphere the, the, I mean, Resident Evil Remake was terrifying. Let's infuse the, the world with like that kind of atmosphere. It would be amazing. You know, and while you're at it, as, while we're talking about rebooting a franchise, let's change the rules a little bit. Introduce something along the lines of Crimson Heads. Those were introduced in the remake, and they were terrifying because they changed the way we looked at zombies. You know, Dying Light might be a more relevant example. They managed to change the rules using the world itself, like the way they did the day-night cycle was incredible, and it changed the way I played that game. It actually made it scarier. So to infuse all of these things into Resident Evil, you know, an open world, and all the things that come along with an open world, like a day-night cycle, a weather system, and then, of course, drop zombies in there and mix those up a little bit. Like, that would be a formula for what, in my opinion, would be an amazing comeback for the franchise. And that's why it's at the top of my list. I think it would be perfect. Now... Resident Evil 7 is coming, we know it, they've already started to comment on it, and I have a sneaking suspicion that it's going to be more Resident Evil 6 bullshit, but that's neither here nor there, we'll see what happens when it, when it happens, but those are my hopes and dreams for Resident Evil, and if you can pull off any of those Capcom, you might actually be able to get me back on board for the franchise, because at this point, that ship has sailed for me, which is really sad because this franchise got me into gaming so it would be a terrible waste to watch it wither and die. Well, we live in a time where open world games are king, so it was a lot of fun to think of all the ways these games could take the plunge. Let me know what you would pick in the comments down below, and if you're a supporter of 4Player on Patreon, look for Brad's upcoming top 5 video game title screens. You can learn more about that at patreon.com 4Player, and as always, thank you guys so much for watching.